Stone Age Gamer pricey package. Oh yeah, we got that cap kit and Fixel's ODE for the Panasonic FC1 3DO. Oh yeah. <laughs> Have you experienced the awesome power of the Panasonic Real 3DO system? Obviously. Yes. The intense realism of Panasonic Real 3DO. Apparently. Or the mind-blowing graphics of Panasonic Real 3DO. Oh. Definitely. Cool. The Real 3DO system from Panasonic. Oh, it's real. Real shitty condition. We're gonna replace leaking capacitors, source a drive tray bezel, install a 240p switch mod, and Fixel's ODE. Oh yeah. CES, summer 1993. Trip Hawkins and Panasonic officially announced the release of the FZ1 Panasonic Real 3DO. And this thing was a freaking monster. At the time, all I had was a SNES, and I remember drooling over video clips and footage and pictures of this thing. Later that year, I seen one in person on display at Best Buy. It was playing the pack-in game Crash and Burn, which doesn't hold up well today, but back then, man, it was mind-blowing. At $699, my 13-year-old broke ass wasn't affording this system. But about a year later, I ran into some money through an unfortunate circumstance. But I ran to Electronics Boutique and caught me a 3DO. The most advanced home gaming system in the universe. It's time to put away your toys. Toys are put away. Let's get these bottom four screws out so we can pop this top off. Get this CD-ROM drive out of here. You got four screws on each corner. Pull up and away. You got these little fingers in the back that you need to unlock. And you want to hinge it back and be careful not to damage those ribbon cables. We're going to reuse them. These just pull out. You might have to work them from each side. Optical drive out. I'm going to reuse these ribbon cables, but I believe you can order new ones from Fixel. Remove all the perimeter screws from this shielding and it just pulls right out. Up at the top middle, we can see this has the VP536 encoder chip, which is a good thing, which means we can install the 240p switch mod in this unit. Oh yeah. Now, if you look here by this large filter cap, you can see some leakage underneath it. Also, the two caps directly below it were in very bad shape. One of them was completely shot, super high ESR, corrosion, leakage. There, there was a little bit of board damage, but uh, we get it cleaned up and I actually upgrade those caps as you'll see later. So now I'm just continuing to break this down, taking the fan out, unplugging that transformer. Uh, we're just gonna work on taking anything else out so we can get this main board out. There's your power and eject buttons. Your clear LED light diffuser. This expansion port shielding. And we're just gonna follow the perimeter of this main board, uh, removing every screw. There's a couple over here I forgot. So this little daughter board for the controller port gonna have to disconnect that little ribbon cable as well. Clearly something was spilled in this one at one point and caused a little bit of rust and discoloration. We'll have to get that bottom part of that case cleaned out real well. So we're going to start off by proceeding with the recap. And I'm just going to go ahead and introduce fresh solder to every joint of all the capacitors so that they can be easily removed. So I start with that large filter cap and I'm just going to remove this one and then all the remaining capacitors. I'm just going to 
desolder the bees, but I'm gonna leave them in circuit. I'm gonna leave them in the board, and that way they'll all be in place, and I can replace them one at a time. You'll you'll see what I'm talking about. So here we are, I vacuum pulled all the solder out of all these capacitor vias, so they're just loose, held in only by the legs being curved, and so we're going to go through and replace them one at a time, that way we don't mix up the capacitance values or voltage values, and I mean you don't have to do it this way, it's just a little quicker, a little easier than pulling them all out and having to have a cap map. We got this capacitor removed. Just grabbing one of the same capacitance and voltage rating. And we'll pop that in and we'll continue on down the line. These legs are bent from the factory to hold them into place. So I just pry them straight with my side cutters and then they come right out. Just pay attention to polarity. You'll have this white line on your capacitors that indicates the cathode or the negative side. And on these FZ1 boards, you'll have a white line there that indicates your negative or cathode side. Just line those two up, search your cap. I like to give the legs a little spreading. Oh, you know I do. No, but that will hold them in there until you can come back and solder them all at once. From here, I just work my way through the board one at a time. There's two caps that I upgrade the values on, and we'll, we'll talk about that here in a moment. All right, so we got this area cleaned up. These were where the two leaking caps were. And one of them was 1000 UF 6.3 volt. We're gonna beef it up with a 1000 UF 25 volt. And this was the worst cap here. You can barely read it. It's charred and it's charred and all green and sticky and nasty. 10 UF 16 volt. And you have 50 volt we'll throw in there so like i mentioned this was the most affected area where that large cap was and these other two clustered right behind it right next to a heat sink so there's probably a good concentration of heat there that over the past 30 years really does damage to them capacitors and once they dry out the esr gets higher and it just snowballs so it's good to replace at least those all right before we solder it in Double check, make sure your polarity is correct on everything. And of course, we got that big boy to put back in there. Right, here we are capacitors repopulated all soldered in just make sure you didn't miss any and now we're going to go ahead and get this back cleaned up Not sure if this was just a bodge fix on my board or if this was on every board of this model, but I had a resistor that bridged uh, the two capacitor legs and I'm just reinstalling that. You can see the picture I took on my phone so I remembered which one it was. Just don't forget to reinstall that. Oh yeah. Here's a close up of it. Now from here, I'm just gonna install a simple toggle switch right above the expansion slot in the back of this system. And this is just gonna bridge pins 52 and 55 of the VP 
536 encoder. You also want to remove resistor 166. I didn't do this at first and you have issues when you go to reboot the system if you do not remove this. I figured this out through Taji Gamer, so shout out to him. Thank you. And this is just a little closer look of this 240p switch mod. Definitely worth it. I would install this if you have a compatible encoder. It's effing awesome. And from here, I just loaded up and started to 3D print the ODE mounting bracket assembly. Here we are, main board freshly recapped back in the case with the shielding on. This uh, clip was a day or so later. I was waiting on all the 3D printed parts to get finished and ordered this super shielded gold plated S video cable. And we will not be needing this optical drive any longer. Oh yeah. So I did find a file to 3D print a drive tray cover. It's not pretty. I had planned to order an embossed metallic Panasonic logo to stick on the face of it. These little clips are what hold that drive tray in, but I do not end up using that 3D printed drive tray. Here's a look at that 3D printed ODE mounting assembly. Um, it just mounts in with two screws where the top two were for the, for the optical disc assembly. So we're just gonna pop that in right there. The ODE will sit like this and we'll reuse those ribbon cables from the optical drive. Here we're securing that optical drive emulator bracket with those two screws from the optical drive. And I have two little divots here for installing the ODE. I can't remember if those were part of the print or if I made them with just a sharp edge, but I need to pilot those holes out. And instead of drilling them out, I'm just gonna take a screw and heat it up and screw it in, let it cool, remove it. And I'm using these small M3 screws from this kit I had. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this ODE finally installed in its resting spot. Don't forget to load up your entire 3DO library. Oh yeah. If you would have told me in the 90s you could have every 3DO game on a little chip the size of your thumbnail, I'd have thought you were crazy. Make sure your ribbon cables are installed correctly. This one you have to hold in the slot while you force that locking collar back, make sure you get it secure so you get a good connection. Oh yeah. Here's a little close up of that super shielded gold plated ass video cable, super high quality. I only paid eight bucks shipped for this thing. I'll leave a link in the description if I can find it. Shout out to Valkyr1983 on Reddit. Dude was cool enough to offer a Panasonic disc cover free of charge. All I had to do was pay shipping. So this 3D printed one was better than nothing and I planned to put a Panasonic sticker on it, but I mean, there's nothing like the original and that really completes the setup and, and just brings the nostalgia to another level. You know what I mean? Having that missing really sucked. So thanks again to Valkyrie 1983. So it was at this point, I had already tested the system. Everything worked, but when resetting, it would hang up if I had the 240p switch enabled. And Taji Gamer uh, let me know about resistor 166. Here that little microscopic sucker is. You need to pull that out of circuit. Then you'll have no problems resetting with 240p enabled and it really completed the mod and made it seamless and it works fantastic so from this point the mod is complete only thing we have left to do is install that little optical drive cover um, the only thing i would change with this mod is i would install the rgb mod but none of them are available I thought about ordering just the PCB from Osh Park, but Taji Gamer designed the PCB and he made me aware that 
they do not work with certain PVMs, and that's mainly what I would be running this on. So I'm just hoping another run of those citrus based RGB PCBs are ran and that I could get a hold of one and I would I would probably go back and install it into this. But the S video looks fantastic, especially on the 800 TV line Panasonic broadcast monitor that I have. Here's that drive cover inserted with those little 3D printed brackets. And now we're just gonna button this job up.